We're really excited to be working with Free Trade, who've sponsored this video. Free Trade believes in commission free investing for everyone. This means you won't pay any commission when investing your spare cash. While other brokers charge up to £12 per trade, Free Trade doesn't, so you can keep more of your money. And where they do charge, like on FX, it's fair and transparent. The design of the app makes it simple and easy to use, which is great for any experience level. From beginners starting to educate themselves on the benefits of investing to experts already in the know. You can start investing from just two pounds and they offer these things called fractional stocks. This basically means you can buy a small piece of expensive US companies like Google, Tesla and Apple. With over 700,000 investors on board and having won the best online trading platform at the British Bank Awards five years running, they're an investment platform you can trust. Now for the best bit, if you create and fund your account with just 50 pounds using our link, you will get a free share worth between 10 and 100 pounds. That could be in anything from Ford to Spotify. Remember, when you invest, your capital is at risk. The value of your portfolio can go up as well as down and you may get back less than you put in. This is not financial advice. You should always do your own research on what investments are right for you before investing or seek the advice of a professional. Another disastrous day for McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> McLaren Fan TV representing his McLaren Fan TV. Yeah, man. Episodes every Tuesday, but yeah, turn the P3 into whatever that was. <laughs> well, it was yeah. looking so good. It was looking so good. Like, what, what do you make of the incident? Obviously, Norris, Hamilton, contact out of the kind of first chicane mm -hmm. turn one two what do you make of it um i think it's just more of those one of those lap one incidences obviously signs and uh, max were having their little shenanigans at the front and then obviously signs backs up breaks a little bit there's a re repeat effect with lewis yeah. as well yeah then yeah bit of a wrong place wrong norris place, norris's right? uh, front end plate just gone but yeah like i was mentioning it on the live stream like our car is extremely brittle just like every time it skims anything, if it skims a wall, if it's just broken, it's completely done. Yeah. It's like it hasn't got any like robustness to it. The Alpine can go to war. Yeah. <laughs> the McLaren, yeah. it can't. Yeah. Even the Mercedes, like that front wing's strong, you know, yeah, like yeah. every time I remember Hamilton having contact with anybody, it would be, be completely fine. But this car just, just melts away. The same as the Ferrari, just melts away any yeah. type of contact whatsoever. Yeah. But it's just one of those things, bad luck. And then that's the race over for Norris. And then Piastri had a bad start. And then, just got swamped and then out of the points as well. It's just one of those things. Yeah. yeah. The praying for rain didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the problem, isn't it? It's like we, we create a car that's clearly good between the wet and dry and not necessarily for like a normal race weekend uh, in, in Formula One. And we just want one normal day of, of, of racing where there's no one issues. Regular no regular day. No, just one like regular McLaren. day. How long has it been since McLaren oh. have given you consistent, good, normal days? We've had what? Two, the, the, I, think, right? I think the two, the two days we've had normal this season, yeah. we finished double points. Yeah. Like that just kind of shows you what's what's at stake here. And as you said, the car is brittle, and we can't be creating a car like this. B spec car, we need it now. When's it coming? <laughs> Silverstone. We said between Austria and Silverstone, Austria and Silverstone. so it has to be Silverstone, right? They're not going to introduce it on a sprint weekend. What? What? Let, what's the realistic expectations in. from that though? That is a completely different car to the one that we've got at the yeah. moment because this car is just, the, the performance window is so narrow yeah. to the point where it's weather-dependent car. You well, can't have a weather-dependent car. Aston Martin brought the perfect B-spec because they went from, even at the end of last season, yeah. they were the they were still, I think, slightly slower than Alpine and McLaren. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden they leapfrogged to second quickest with yeah. one big upgrade. Yeah. So, so like, you know that it wasn't like gradual upgrades. It, it came in one big hit yeah. mm -hmm. and they hit the ground running. Obviously they had testing um, at Bahrain to get on top of the package. Mm -hmm. And then they've been second quickest car for most races. This one ex excluded, to be sure. honest. So so in the same vein as how Aston Martin did it, what's happening at McLaren is this B-spec car is basically the base of the direction we're going to go in for moving forward. And it's kind of a move away from what James Key's design was previously over to Pete Prod and having that kind of his control of the design mm -hmm. moving forward. And then obviously we've got um, David Sanchez coming in. We've got a new uh, Rob Marshall as well. This is going to be a change of direction. I wouldn't expect immediate results straight away, but we have to kind of move away from whatever we've got at the moment that we've been rolling with mm. from the beginning of 2022 to now. If that concept's not worked, you just have to scrap it and move forward with something else. And yeah. this is going to be the start of another path where you could possibly see a huge jump 
the which is kind of what Mercedes are sta- saying at the minute about their new up um, side pods and floor and all that. It's it's setting the foundations for like a long term direction. But do you think that you know with the Aston Martin Honda news, you know Honda were there was conversations with McLaren as well. Mm. Obviously, they've got this works deal. McLaren, you're still a customer team to Mercedes. Do, like, do you believe this whole like assertion that you aren't, can't fight for a championship if you're a customer? I believe it. I, I'm one of those people. Uh, I know there's other McLaren fans that are <laughs> not, but I, I'm very much like, this is extremely worrying to be yeah. in a... On a I, I would the options are... We're losing options now. Of course, yeah, we got very limited, plastic. isn't it? Yeah, And, quite, and yeah. It's, it's one of those situations where I wouldn't be so worried if it was just four... Um, factory teams and then mm. the rest were the fact that Aston Martin has now got a Honda deal we've got Audi in there as well yep. that means there's what six teams that are factory teams mm. and one of them ain't McLaren that's yeah. a problem Yeah, because especially because there's an engine change mm. in 2026 it might it might uh, some teams I'm not going to say 100% you're going to succeed if you've got an engine we've seen that with McLaren we've had an ex- exclusive engine deal with uh, with Honda it did not mm. work mm-hmm. right and uh, invariably some of these other teams that have got these engine deals in 2026 it's not going to work for them mm. yeah. right so is the best bet to say oh let's get to 2026 see you've got the best engine be their customer mm. maybe they're just hedging their bets, the bets that way or maybe they're maybe thinking about another direction maybe waiting on what Andre is going to be bringing in if they do come into Formula 1 if they do get accepted in and coming even in they with, were going to run Renault engine they were going to run a Renault engine right so at least in the short term it's, yeah. it's looking like and for me now it's looking like they're going to be a customer but it's really about do they make the right selection in terms of engine right how do you feel about it Pete? and that's the thing I, I don't mind us being a customer at this moment in time because who knows mercedes might be the team that actually get this right as soon as 2026 comes in what if they're the best engine supplier mm. on the grid you'd rather be with mercedes than try maybe let's say hedge our bets with anybody else that's, um, yeah, that's new especially it's, yeah. and, and if you're new so you know your audis and so on i'm, I'm a bit like you know pinch of salt let's see how how well they mm. do the, you know in the new regulations but for me i think you know, McLaren has worked well when it's been second to Mercedes and even then it's still, the engine is fine. It's just, uh, McLaren needs to sort out other bits. There's other pieces that are yes. more prominent than the engine itself. And yeah. the engine's not that bad. I would say that right now, it feels like there's not too much differential, differential in performance between engines. So from from what I understand, yeah, speaking it, it to people like more intelligent than me, you understand like <laughs> what the actual breakdown. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the actual engine isn't making the difference. Like you look at the Alpha Tauri that's running sure. the Rebel powertrain, sure, and that's right towards the back where the Williams is, and mm-hmm. you've got like the Ferraris quick, even like the the Renault. I mean. Maybe, maybe Alpine have a terrible chassis, and actually they've got the best engine. Got, yeah, it, it feels like this is the least difference there's been in terms of like different engine supplies. I'd say yeah. since the Turbo Hybrid era. I guess well, Aston Martin are using a Mercedes engine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, I mean, that, that is, yeah, that, that's, that's the, the one, that's that's the 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 one sign. Sign. thing I will say in terms of like being a customer team. Obviously, there is a slight disadvantage in the sense that you can't just have that massive burst away mm-hmm. from anyone. But if you if you choose the right engine supplier to be a customer to, you, you, you're you calm, like yeah. realistically. And, and McLaren hasn't committed to anybody in 2026. Yeah. The deal with Mercedes ends, then they're quite free to pick whoever they feel is the best uh, engine at that time. The problem with McLaren, and we've seen this in the new regs, is that they're just really deficient when it comes to the aero. Mm. And yeah. a lot of the time, I think, I think it all goes back to the cost cap and then cutting a lot of stuff. And then obviously you want to cut the fat and not the, mu- the muscle and they've cut the muscle as well. So therefore yeah, yeah. there's been a whole progress of getting staff back and hiring people because it's all well and good having a wind tunnel and having all the facilities and so on, but you need the staff, right? Yeah. So yeah. these moves are positive moves to make sure that the team is not lacking in terms of uh, error efficiency. Well, you're getting on mm. a bit of a poaching spree. Yeah. Like, is that what you've, so you've got David Sensor's coming at the end of this yes. year from yeah. Ferrari. You've got now, is it Rob Marshall? Rob Marshall from, from, from Red, Bull. Red Bull. And then um, Sanchez, who came from mm. Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So as much as you're right, you know, the facilities weren't there to begin with and also the personnel we had to re-up again. I think when Stella joined, became like the team principal at McLaren, one of the things that were quite, very clear was I, the side I need to look at is sort of you know the engineering side the aerodynamic side I need to make sure that this is in, in place and the reason why James Key and the like were not there at the launch for example it, it clearly Zach and Andrea were having 
conversations. Mm. They were having these conversations from early, knowing that we may have to scrap this car sooner rather than later. And I'm trusting the, how can I put it? Like the, the decision making the from Zach. Yeah, I'm trusting the process. Mm. Uh, you know, <laughs> as you can, as you well know, I, I'm Not getting again. used to this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, getting used to this. But I think, yeah, you know, the, the engine thing is quick. It's, it, when the Aston Martin news came out about Honda, it was very easy to sort of be like panic. Mm. But at the same time, it's like, we're running our own little lane here. Aston Martin were here once upon a time when they were getting the right people in, in the right place. They were sorting out their, you know, their facilities as well. Now they've kind of got all of those things in place and off they've gone to the races type of thing. Um, and I think McLaren is a matter of time. We just have to now be very, very careful with the, with the moves we made. But I, I think since the start of the year, I think McLaren has been very, very smart. And I think, you know, happy that Seidel kind of, yes. Yeah, and, and Seidel's kind of sort of started this off when he was moving to, to Salva or, you know, to Alfa Romeo, it kind of made us, you know, buck up our ideas a bit quicker mm. and put things in place. So I'm not necessarily worried at all. Um, as a McLaren fan, you shouldn't be too, too worried. Yeah. I, I think everything now, the reason the McLaren is bad all the reasons and people that were associated with that are no longer there. Yeah. Right. right so yeah. all the, all the stuff around obviously Seidel and James Key building that car for 2022 and not really doing too well with it. And then yeah. building this car, cause obviously you build yeah, this yeah. year's car last year. Mm -hmm. they, they, that's, that's been trimmed off. That's gone. Obviously Seidel got his promotion at Sauber and so yeah. on, but Obviously, no blames going to these guys. Mm. Yeah, mm. key inside. And side it's more like, oh, let's shout at Zach yeah, rather exactly. than shout at those two yeah, that yeah. are no longer there. Yeah. Right. And the first thing that uh, Andrea Stella said when he came, that one of the first interviews, he said, oh, "I need to look at the the era side and sort this car out. Yeah, I need to look at the factory. So I'm not happy with the kind of what's going on over there. 